G'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How, and in this video, we're gonna run through how to install a new grill for your Jeep Wrangler. Let's get started. If you're keen to support the channel, I'd be muchly appreciative, of course. Easiest way you can do that is to click the subscribe button down this way here. Otherwise, feel free to leave a bit of a thumbs up down the bottom, some comments if you've got any questions and answers. Share with your buddies all of the above, which in now that I'm saying it sounds like a lot of hard work. If you don't have to do all of that, hit the subscribe and uh, all will be well. Anyway, on to the install of the grill. Now, before we get started in earnest, I feel like we need to cover off something that's a little controversial with these guys. There's lots of different grill types, angry grill types. There's crazy uh, ones like this that are transformer type grills. There's the standard seven slot type grills, which the purists will say you need seven slots uh, for it to be a Jeep. Now, I'm kind of 50-50 with this sort of stuff. Each of their own, I reckon. The big thing that I like about Jeeps is the fact, especially the newer ones, you can customize them to the Shazam and they are uniquely yours uh, under the sort of the other bits and pieces, depending on what type of suspension, tires, all the accessories, etc. Now, for me, a big part of the type of grill, I kind of wanted the seven slots, but then I also need airflow, hence all the meshy bits. I do have an angry bird type grill behind there which is a full mesh and no slots and I've been looking for one for a little while that kind of had the best of both worlds and I saw this one this was actually sent to me by JK Warehouse I'll put the links in the description if you're keen to check it out uh, and this kind of combines the best of both worlds so keen to get cracking and install it on the Jeep tool wise for installation you're really not going to need a whole lot you're really going to need just a flathead and also a trim remover tool if you have one otherwise a flathead is basically all you need so this is the current grill setup that i am rolling with the blasphemous angry bird style that's made worse by the fact that there is no seven slots underneath there it is just completely open grill for maximum airflow this is Australia and it does get quite warm in the summer months so that combined with the fact that this is a turbo diesel Jeep uh, unfortunately for you Americans there no turbo diesel fun for you but because of that they tend to get quite warm um, so maximum airflow is the way forward so that's what I've been rocking with until I found the one that we're about to install which has the best of both worlds step one is lift the hood Once the hood's up, next step is to go along and find these little doobies here. There are six in total, so there's one, another one there, one on either side of the latch mechanism, another guy here, and one on the end. So next step is just to essentially remove those. Once they're all out, the grill should pretty much come away just like that. But wait, there's more before you do anything. Make sure you disconnect your little indicators down the bottom here, because if you go and try and rip out uh, the whole grill, you're gonna take them with them and cause all sorts of dramas for the wires behind, being that guy as well. So go around behind and disconnect. Should be as simple as this guy here. And uh, depending if you've got aftermarket ones or stock ones, it's just a matter of twisting. And if you twist it around far enough, you should be able to pull out the wiring just like that. Right, with your indicator sections or your turn signals all unbuttoned, the next step is really just to pull this guy out. Now for me, I like to make things super easy and, and what have you. Winch, it's kind of in the way. I've been an absolute slacker and haven't bothered to bolt this down. Uh, I'll be doing that later on, and the plan is to sort of sit it in here behind the loop. But for me, I just need to get some of this stuff out of the way. Um, so we've got enough room. And then it's just a matter of pulling it out. Now, this type of grill that I have 
is quite thick in the front here so if you're pulling a stock grill out it should be no dramas and at this point you should be able to pull it basically up and out. Da da! So this is the grill that I was running before, tons of airflow as you can see, however no slots in the front, so each their own. At this point you're going to want to take out your turn signals here, one conveniently fell out for me so it's just a matter of taking the other guy out. And these are pretty straightforward, you will see at the back uh, they have these little clips here, so it's a matter of just squishing these guys and it will pop straight out. So once it's out, good time to inspect what's going on underneath. Make sure, so for example, a whole bunch of sand and dirt here, which I should probably clean up. Good time to expect, inspect, expect, inspect your radiator. Now, like I was saying before, this is a turbo diesel. Turbo down in there somewhere, down in there. Turbo diesel, um, so a few extra things going on. We have the intercooler, which is this guy here. For those with petrols that haven't seen one, I have installed an aftermarket automatic transmission cooler, which is this big guy here. I am replacing this, which will be coming up in a future episode with uh, a high quality unit. Um, condenser rad behind that. So anyway, if you haven't taken very good care of, of your radiator, what have you, or you haven't given a clean out, now's the time to do it, people. Now's the time. So if you've got crud in there, give it a good clean. Don't use a pressure washer, just the garden hose and some degreaser. Give it a good clean while you're here. Cool, so once you're all cleaned up and whatever stuff you needed to do, depending on your particular Jeep, the next step is to get this guy in there. Main things you want to look out for is your clearance. So I recommend that check to see what you're going on down in here. You got winch cables or transmission coolers or any of that sort of jazz make sure that you've got plenty of room there and you don't really want to go jamming anything down uh, and and pulling any of this sort of stuff uh, out of the way so check your clearances also check at the back of your new grill you'll see that it has lots of these little guys the little clips so you want to make sure that they're all in place now that's a locating little lug there Lots of little clips, you want to make sure these are in place before you put the thing in because it's going to be an absolute pitter if you need to do that separately. But other than that, you're good to go, just a matter of sliding it down and locating everything to where it should go. Alright, so it's all in there, pretty straightforward really. I've got full headlights back, oh my god, and I have some sluts. So that's pretty cool, I'm pretty happy with that, it looks pretty rad. So the next step really is just to button it up. I would be making sure everything aligns here, which we're looking pretty good uh, within reason. So now you want to go to your safe spot that you put all the screws and you want to put them all back in. Once you drop the first ones in, then you just want to drop these guys in and they clip straight in. Once it's all clipped in, the next step and basically final step is to get the weather seal uh, strip, which is just like this one. You want to install it so the strippy bit goes backwards. And what that does is it sits along the top of the grill, just along there. And the whole purpose of that is that when uh, you close the hood, this lip along the top here will jam closed against the weather seal and just provide some seal and from the weather, I guess, going into the engine compartment. Once the weather strip is all installed and in place, I've used a little bit of silicon as well just to really keep it in there. The only other thing to do, people, is install your indicators or turn signals into their new home down here. Uh, clip it into place just like that. Go around the back there and connect it and you are done. 
quick check of the blinkers to make sure that they are still working fine. And in this case, it looks like we are all good. No crazy flashing, flashing or anything like that. All right, so the only other thing left is to put the hood down and admire our handiwork. These have been really cool. The Rugged Ridge hood latches. Uh, there's an install video at the top here, but been very happy with them so far. Probably been about six months, so check them out. All done, simple as that. This would have to be one of the easiest installs and modifications that you can make to your Jeep. They're pretty straightforward. Pretty happy with how it turned out. Everything fit really well. All the headlights and all that sort of jazz went in, not a problem. Stoked that I have uh, some slots back along the front here. And also, I think I've actually increased some airflow. Uh, not that there's a radiator over here or what have you, but unrestricted should keep the temps down in the turbo diesel and keep things nice and happy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Click here if you want to subscribe to the channel. You'll find lots of other videos showing you through how to do all sorts of stuff just like this one and also this one. Other than that, I hope you have a great day. Remember to hit the subscribe button. It really helps support the channel and I'll see you next time.